Number three then from the 2000 higher paper two, the cubic expression, the polynomial question with factorization and so on. Although this strictly speaking is slightly different from the ones that you normally do because this one starts off based on saying show that this is a root. Right, quite often they start show it's a factor and then fully factorize. This says show it's a root and hence factorize. So there's a couple of ways of going about it. Strictly speaking, I'll put it down both ways, I'll mention it. If x equals 1 is a root, that means that the value of this expression at x equals 1 should come to 0. The roots are the solutions to that equation. So one way of going through this would be to say this. Well, at x equals 1, now there's no name for that, I'll just say that you've got 1 cubed plus 8 times 1 squared plus 11 times 1 minus 20, which equals 0. And then since the value at x equals 1 is 0, that means x equals 1 is a root of the equation. That takes an awful lot of writing. And the second part said, Hence, factorise just the expression part. Notice, not the equation, just the expression part. Well, then you'd have to say, well, if x minus one, if x equals one is a root, that means that x minus one is a factor. Then you would say this. In that case, x minus one times something would have to produce x cubed plus eight x squared plus 11x minus 20. And then it's just a case of finding what should appear in this bracket as the quadratic to multiply to give this. Well, the first times the first would have to give x cubed, so that would have to be an x squared. Negative 1 times the n should be negative 20, so that should be a plus 20. And then if you take the x squared term, I've got minus 1x squared from this part, so this x will have to produce the other 9 to balance it out, so it must be plus 9x. Then factorising that fully, x minus 1, and then it'll be x times x. Factors are 20 that add up to 9, 4 and 5. The biggest one's positive, they're both positive. And then get the factorisation. Well, that would be one way. The other way would be to employ synthetic division. Now, this is the way you'd probably be going about it. You just have to be careful about your statements because it doesn't say show it's a factor, hence factorise. So I could put down my synthetic division table, realising I'm going to be doing a factorisation. There's the four coefficients that I need for cubes, so nothing's missing. 1, 8, 11, negative 20. And then putting 1 into it means I'm going to use this table the way that you would use it for an evaluation. Remember, it's got a double purpose. You can either think I'm doing a division by x minus that number, in which case that'll be the quotient and that'll be the remainder, but it also works for evaluating the expression at the number you put in. If I happen to put in a number that gives me an answer of zero, it means I found a root. If it wasn't a root, then whatever number I put in here, when I feed it through, will give the value of this expression at that number. That's, the, that's what I'm using it for in this case. So feeding that in, add down, multiply it up, add it down, multiply it up, add it down, multiply it up, and I do indeed get zero. But I have to be careful how I state my result, because it said show that that's a root. So I'd have to write that similar thing. I would have to say, since the value at x equals 1 is zero, that means that x equals 1 is a root. May as well finish off of the equation. And I've not left myself enough room, so I'll just put the equation. Then the second part says, hence fully factorise it. Well, I'm still going to have to write the same thing. I'm still going to have to say that I know if that's a root, that means that x minus 1 is a factor. And then I can factorise it, but now I've got the table for the other part. Which means that if I've got x cubed plus 8x squared plus 11x minus 20, that that would equal x minus 1 times, and I can just read it from here, x squared plus 9x plus 20, and factorise it as before. x times x, 4 times 5, positive, 
both positive. So that's probably the way you would do it because you just tend to launch into that synthetic division anyway. Just remember, of course, that that's got a double purpose, an evaluation or a division, and you're treating it just now as an evaluation. So you have to make this statement, the evaluation statement, not a statement that says, since the remainder is zero, then x equals one as a root. It'd have to be since the remainder is zero, x minus one is a factor, hence x equals one as a root. Now for part b, solve this log equation in the same question. So you must be thinking, well, there must be some connection, otherwise mix these, why mix these two totally different things together? Well, forgetting the first part and just taking this in its own merit, there are two logs being added, so you can use the laws of logarithms to reduce it to a single term. If you're adding logarithms, it'll be the single logarithm of the product x plus 3 times x squared plus 5x minus 4 would equal 3. And then you can start removing parts you don't want. The inverse of log base 2 is exponential base 2. So x plus 3 times x squared plus 5x minus 4 would be, taking this over as its inverse, exponential base 2. So 2 lifts the 3 up as its power. Now I'm back to a normal looking equation. It's a useless factorisation though, because it's not equal to zero, so I'll just have to unravel it all and gather it again. I'll just pop that value in, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So I'll just have to multiply it all out. So it's x times everything. So it'll be x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x, and then 3 times everything. Plus 3x squared plus 15x minus 12 equals, bring the 8 over as well, minus 8 equals zero. Then you start tidying it up, an x cubed, Ooh. 5 and 3, an 8x squared, oh, something's ringing the bell here, minus 4 plus 15, plus 11x, Ooh. minus 12 minus 8, minus 20, it was what you had in part A, which means you already know the factorisation for that, was x minus 1, x plus 4, x plus 5, and then you leap happily into the solutions. That means x equals 1, x equals negative 4, and x equals negative 5. But before you happily underline it, you have to be careful, because these were solutions to a log equation, and you can't just put anything into a log equation. Remember the log graph looks like this, cutting through 1. The domain is x greater than 0. You can't work out the logarithm of a negative number. There's nothing on this side or even on that line. Which means you're just even looking at this part here. I can't put a negative 4 into that because it wouldn't produce an answer. So I'd have to make one final statement, which is, which means x equals 1 since x has got to be greater than 0. That would be the correct answer to 3 part b.